Hi everyone, Anshita this side. Welcome back to AV Automation Hub. In today's video, we are going to learn about the blueprint for creating a robust test automation framework. According to the industry research, the organizations waste a huge amount of money on an ineffective test automation. And the reason is the poor framework architecture. So for that reason, I'm creating this video in which I have curated all the essential points and the factors which are important for creating a robust test automation framework. So these are the essential components of creating a good test automation framework. So just think of it as an architecture plan. So each section over here plays a very important role in the overall structure. And this, we are going to use it as a roadmap throughout the video today. Following these components, you can easily reduce your maintenance cost. You can speed up your test development and you can catch more works before they reach the production. So good test automation framework should always be efficient, maintainable and scalable regardless of the tool being used. So it can be used for Selenium, it can be used for Cypress or it can be used for Playwright, right? Let's start with the roadmap over here. First one over here is the design pattern. So design patterns are basically used to create reusable solutions to your common problem. Using the correct design pattern, you can help maintain a cleaner code, scalable code and more efficient code base, right? The examples of design pattern are like page object model, factory pattern, decorator pattern, or singleton pattern. So these are just some of the design pattern. Based on the requirement, you can use the design pattern in your, in your project. So by leveraging it, you can create a flexible automation framework. For example, one of the best and most used one in test automation framework is page object model. So using which you can separate your test data file, you can separate your page file. And then based on that, you can easily maintain the code. Fine. Now moving on to the next one, which is logging and debugging. Again, very important whenever you are creating a test automation framework, you can implement a logging to track the test execution flow and you can capture the detailed information for the troubleshooting purpose. For example, if you have any complex test scenario, so there you can use logging where you can see all the important information in that, in the logs. So ensure your logs are structured so that you can easily pinpoint the issues in the complex test scenario. Just for the demo purpose, I've taken the sample image from google.com. So this is an example from Lambda test blog. So here is an example of detailed logging. So have proper logging and debugging will help you in providing the additional context wherever any test is failed without requiring the code change. First of all, you can easily observe over here and then you can make the, the changes in your code. The next key component is data driven approach. So in data driven approach, what you can do, you can separate your test data from the test code so that you can run the same test case with a different input. Okay, for example, you have to perform login. Login for different users. So all this user information, you can save it in a test data file. So this test data file, it can be any data source, it can be CSV, it can be JSON, or it can be Excel also. So depending on your requirement, you can prepare the test data source for your project. Now, moving on to the next one, which is AAA pattern. So AAA pattern is basically used to maintain consistent test structure for the readability. Let's take the example of login. So first of all, arrange your test data for login, right? Then act on the login, enter the username, enter the password, right? And in the end, assert the successful login message. So this is the AAA pattern. Using AAA pattern, you can ma maintain the consistent test structure in your test automation framework. Fine. Now moving on to the next one, which is Reusable utility functions. So reusable utility function means creating some centralized function for commonly used tasks. For example, you can create a utility to handle drop down, or maybe you can create a utility to handle some API request, right? So what you can do, you can create some common helper functions which are used frequently across your test automation so that you can reduce the code duplication. Make sure to create it in such a way so that it can be used across all the different test suite. It should not be only for one test suite, right? So that is the main purpose of reusable utility functions. Now moving on to the next one, retry logic for flaky test case. Again, it is irrespective of Selenium, Cypress or Playwright. So retry logic means you can implement some smart retry logic mechanism in your framework. So in case maybe there is an issue with the network, or there is an issue with the timing, right? In that case, you can implement the retry logic for handling the intermittent failures, which are caused by maybe timing or maybe environment issue. So in this case, what you can do, you can include your retry counts and delays to handle different types of instability. 
In Cypress and Playwright, it is very easy to handle retrial logic. And in Selenium, you have to write some extra code for this. But you should definitely configure the retrial logic in your test automation framework. Moving on to the next one, which is the reporting. In reporting, we have different type of reports like LO report, chain test report, cucumber HTML report, or mocha awesome report. You should always generate a detailed report where you can see the test execution result, the failure analysis, and the duration, how long it took your test to execute. Right. So some in some of the reports, there are visual representation like charts or graphs. So it all depends what is your requirement. Based on that, you can use any of the reporting. These are just some of the commonly used reporting in the industry today, but you can use any. But the main thing over here is to integrate a report within your test automation framework. So this is sample LR report where you can see number of test cases, how much percentage is passed here. You can also see the trend. Right now, moving on to the next component, which is screenshots and videos. So screenshots and videos are important for debugging the failed test faster. So like in case of Cypress and Playwright, it's, it takes screenshots on videos automatically on the failure. So such features are, are very helpful whenever you are deciding on a tool or a test automation framework, because if you capture screenshot at every test failure, it will be helpful for you in case you want to raise a bug and attach the screenshot. So you can use that also for raising a bug, right? Not only for the verification purpose, but if it is a valid bug, then you copy that screenshot and attach it into your Jira. And if you're in case you're recording the video again, that will also help you in the in debugging the issue. Now moving on to the next one, which is environment and config management. So whenever you're testing, make sure you have environment files or you have a config, proper config files. This is applicable in case you have multiple environments in your project, right? So you can create different configuration files to run across different environments without any code changes. For example, you have QA environment, maybe pre-fraud environment, right? There can be multiple environments in your project, in your organization. So you can create different environment files and based on that, you can test on different environments. You can switch easily between different environments like QA, staging, pre-prod. Now moving on to the next thing, which is parallel execution. So using parallel execution, your test can be executed faster. For example, you want to perform your test execution on Chrome browser as well as on the Firefox. If there is no parallel execution, first it will be performed on Chrome, then it will close and then it will open the Firefox browser and will perform there. But with the parallel execution, it will perform on both the browsers at the same time. Right. So there it will be helpful to perform parallel execution. So for example, in case of playwright, you can perform parallel execution using this hyphen hyphen workers. You can define the worker process over here. And based on that, the parallel execution will happen. Now moving on to the next component, which is mocking and stubbing. So whenever you are creating a framework, also consider about mocking and stubbing. Why this is important? Because you will have more control over the network request. For example, you are integrating with any third party service and that is not ready, right? But your, your system is ready. You know the contract which will be used with your system. So in that case, instead of waiting for the third party service to be completed, what you can do, you can go ahead with mocking and stubbing and you can simulate that external dependencies like APIs, right? Or in third party service, you can mock that. Use it in your framework for integration testing, right? If your dependent service is not ready, you can use this approach. And in case it gets ready, you can easily switch between the real and the mock service. This is a sample example from the Cypress where you can use intercept for this API. Now moving on to the next one, which is cross platform and cross browser support. This is again very important because you should design your framework to accommodate testing across different OS and browsers. Because you do not know your end user is using iPhone or maybe your end user is just performing all this on the desktop browser, right? So for that, ensure your tests run across different browsers and devices. So for that, for example, you can use cross browser testing with browser stack or source lab or Lambda test. There are many platforms available online which you can use to ensure your test is working across different browsers and across different devices properly, right? Now moving on to the next one, which is again very, very important component, which is CI-CD integration. For that, you can use either Jenkins, GitHub Actions, or Azure DevOps. Why CI-CD integration is required? Because you should automate your test on every code push, right? For that, you can use tools like Jenkins, GitHub Actions, or Azure DevOps. 
So using this, you can also schedule your test case to execute daily, maybe at 5 a.m. Or you can use a approach where you want to run your test case whenever a dev pushes his code into his repository, right? So I've created a detailed video on, on the CI/CD integration part. I will also attach it in the description below. You can go through that. Where I've explained different different approaches for integrating CI/CD into your automation framework. The next component is the notification integration. So it's very important to get the real-time notifications. Let's take the same example. When you are running your test case every day, every early morning, 5 a.m., right? So in this case, what you can do, you can integrate some real-time notification. Maybe you can integrate with Slack or Teams where you can get the quick alert. These are some of the commonly used platform like email, Slack, Teams, right? Depending on the platform which you are using in your organization, in your project, go for it and integrate with that. Now moving on to the next topic. So this is last but definitely not the least. Documentation. Although many people skip this part, documentation is very, very important because having a good documentation, having a good readme file in your test automation framework will help not only you but any new joiner to get onboard very quickly. Right? So it will reduce your onboarding time and it will ensure that consistent practices are followed in your project. Because if you'll document there in the readme file, everyone will read that and everyone will follow the same approach. So having a proper documentation, having a proper readme file is definitely one of the important things which most of the people ignore. And here you can provide proper documentation from the framework setup, usage, troubleshooting, right? So ensure the framework is easy for any new joiner who is coming to your team so that they can easily understand and use it. So this is one of the sample for adding a detailed readme. For example, in this repo, we can see there is a detailed readme. What is the repository about? Okay. So it is mentioned over here. It contains both Cypress and Playwright. So how to run Cypress test cases, how to run Playwright test cases. And in case you want to run both. So everything proper detailed readme is added over here. So this is a sample readme file, but based on your requirement, based on your project, you can create a proper, a good readme file. So this is sample test automation framework, the things which you should consider, like for the design patterns, we discuss page object model, factory, decorator, or singleton pattern, right? There are many design patterns based on your requirement you can use. But the most famous one is the page object model. It has several success stories, right? For the test structure, you can use AAA pattern, which is basically arrange, act, and assert, right? You can create different reusable functions used frequently in your automation framework. For example, earlier I gave an example of drop-down handling, right? Next, for the test data management, you can use external data sources like JSON, Excel, or CSV, right? And you should have a proper conflict management as well. Then for the execution engine, you can go with the parallel execution because it will help reduce the execution time, right? You can implement the retry logic for the flakiness in your in your test automation, you can also go with the mocking thing if in case your dependent services are not ready. Fine. Then moving on to the next one, support utilities. We should have logging, proper logging. We should have proper reporting. We should also have screenshots and videos in case of any failure in your test cases. It will be helpful in case you want to attach that or attach that in the bug or in the report also. You can attach all the screenshots, right? And the utility, then the integration, CI/CD integration, the notification engine. You, you should have integration with the platforms like email, Slack, or Teams for the real-time test result, right? So that's all for today's video. I just wanted to highlight the main key factors which you should consider in by creating a robust test automation framework in your project, in your organization. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And in case if you have any queries or any suggestions feel free to drop your questions in the comment section. So that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.